out yet? No, not yet. Wow, this thing just kind of <laughs> failed on me, didn't it? Okay. Give it time. All right. Throw it um, away, Sorg. Sorg, we all have those problems. No, uh, well, I, well, I'm going to have to take from the Patreon money and buy a new one now. Okay. It's That's okay, it. buddy. Am I allowed to? Uh, Garza, am I allowed to get a new pop screen? Sure. All righty. There you go. <laughs> That's... So it's his call. Answer. It's his call. Uh, but no, uh, of course, a uh, friend of the show and Eric Young, we actually interviewed Eric uh, years ago, uh, an early friend of the show. Um, and he was still in TNA because he's been there that long. He's actually been in TNA. God, when, now that I think about it, if I have the date, like, like close to 10 years ago, we interviewed him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably, actually. Uh, it's well into at least maybe our second or third year, maybe, we talked to him. <laughs> so we should give him a call. <laughs> we might have his, maybe his number is still the same. Maybe if his number is still the years. same, I might have it somewhere. and be like, hey, Eric, Wrestling Mayhem Show. I know it's been a while. Before he signs to the big company. I, I know. I know. Oh, yeah. No, you, uh, you're, yeah, yeah, you're kidding me. You absolutely remember us. Uh, but no, him and Bobby Roode. Um, um, uh, leaving the company, uh, it was, gave their notice to their last parts of the recordings, uh, the tapings this past week, of course. So you'll still see them for like a month, I guess, uh, on the shows. But they'll probably also be on NXT at the same time because that's how it goes. Um, this is significant because they're like these two guys. I think collectively are the sting of the company. Mm-hmm. I guess you could have said and AJ they, Styles was the sting of the company originally, but. But these are, I mean, these were, these guys were there for the long haul. And I don't think it ever left at any point during their, their tenure there with TNA. And I don't want this to be another death knell of TNA. I kind of more want to think about what can we do with Bobby Roode and, and Eric Young at this point? Eric Young, you know, as a lot of the articles are saying, has been an absolute chameleon over the years, playing every role possible on the con in the company uh tuning back in the tna a couple months ago and seeing he was this like madman right now um was pretty fantastic too um you know I, I the guy is super talented and it'd be amazing to see what he does in another environment in any environment i can think of i think both these guys could flourish in um uh, what do you guys i i um um uh, garza you're typically the tna defender here um, um, um how are you feeling about this initially i'm i'm actually okay with this uh i think they're they both been in tna so long that they have nothing else to do and i think it's good for them to try something else and i think it's actually good for tna to i mean probably Aside from James Storm, they were probably some of the ones that were getting more the most money. So, you know, if TNA can save that money and hire like another tag team and an expedition guy and a knockout, hey, by all means, uh, TNA the only way they, they can survive, they can maintain themselves alive on, on comatose is by bringing in uh, younger people who can like give excitement to their divisions. So mm -hmm. I'm okay. Uh, I, I, I feel I wish Bobby Roode would go to Ring of Honor in New Japan because there are just so many dream matches that I've been wanting for the last 10 years. Uh, but I think we all kind of know that he's probably NXT bound. Uh, and same with, with Eric Young. Uh, I, I feel for Eric Young because he's probably going to become the, the Santino Morella of, of <laughs> NXT and eventually WWE. And it kind of sucks because he's the guy that I always love when he becomes really serious. So, but I mean, I, mean it's a, I think it's it's one of those uh, news where I just try to see the positive and, you know, it can help both sides. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I agree, and I definitely agree with the aspect of, like, the fact that I hope that they kind of do find their <laughs> stuff kind of elsewhere. I think, uh, you, like you said, Ring of Water, I think the New, J uh, New Japan would be great fits for either of them. Um, people, I think, are automatically defaulting to them going to WWE. Uh, and I think we've seen with James Storm that that's not always guaranteed. He was there for a cup of coffee, and then he kind of left. Yeah. And I don't know if he was, like, the test to kind of see if, like, TNA guys would kind of work there. I think they – I mean, people pop for him because they were in Florida, and, you know, Florida – the NXT crowd and the TNA crowd are still very similar, like as far as ge geographically wise. Um, 
but I don't know if they have long-term staying power in, in NXT or WWE necessarily. They are guys who I, I really always liked in TNA. However, I always had that background fear of like, I don't really like a lot of wrestling in TNA. Um, so I don't know if they're like good for, t- good for TNA, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like, I think we're seeing an influx of, of, you know, international and, and independent talents in NXT right now that are performing at a level to where you kind of have to perform to that level in order to be considered anything. We're kind of seeing that with guys like Elias Sampson right now, who is a solid wrestler, but isn't to the level of, like, the, the independent names that they bring in, like, that they, that they kind of advertise and bill as, like, top stars. Um, and I feel like Bobby Roode and, and Eric Young could fall into that. Um, I, I, I hope the best for them, obviously. Um, but I don't think anything is necessarily guaranteed for them when it comes to WWE. You know, when you mentioned that, I, I, I just wanted to say really quick, uh, um, they're kind of, those, those guys are kind of old right now. I think Bobby Roode is like around 39. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I don't think they would like uh, just drop TNA not knowing uh, there's something else that they can do right now. So I think yeah. there's only talks. Garza, you and I were like are like this right now. We are we are combined <laughs> because I just pulled it up. Bobby Roode is 39. Uh, Eric Young is 36. So yeah. they have they have they still have some tread on their tires Mm -hmm. yeah but to see with those ages you got to sit there and think what do they have to offer wwe that wwe would want them so i mean that's the problem yeah i would say like yeah like guys like aj styles are around that age however aj styles was brought in and then immediately brought up to the main roster as a main as a big deal if they're going to have these guys go through nxt which i would think they would have to i don't know why you would just bring up bobby Roode and eric young as like guys, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, particularly when at least you could mention, like, like you can mention that AJ Styles did this stuff in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he was a top independent name, so to speak, and was like kind of the face of the Indies. They cannot mention that that that. I was going to mention TNA. I was going to say if we're going off the Edge of Christian show, they're not going to. They're not going to mention TNA. Like they aren't. Um, uh, I, I just find, I don't know, I think they're kind of in a place, I think a company like New Japan Pro Wrestling that has been known for taking talents that kind of didn't make it in like a mainstream sort of level in the U.S. and making them stars in Japan, I think they would find it a really good place for them particularly. Um, or or another topic, I would love to see them in Lucha. You know, I, I think particularly someone like an Eric Young who's just a great character work. I think you could fit perfectly well in Lucha. Um, but yeah. Also, uh, complete side note that, to this whole story. Uh, I'm sorry, James Storm. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to re- I'm gonna come back to reform this tag team, and then my tag team partner leaves where I left. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. was kind of weird that that happened. It was like, probably yeah, his fault. Yeah. I mean, he because he's now getting like more money than he was getting in NXT. So obviously, guys like Eric Young and Bobby Brock are like, well, maybe we can get that money too. But oh, guess what? We don't have enough money. So, too bad. Yeah. yeah. And the sad thing is, like, I agree with you guys on, I'd love to see them in New Japan or even Lucha. But strange enough, and I could see it easier that they'd probably end up in Global Force because of yeah. Jeff. Then it's yeah. a lateral move. Yeah, it is, yeah, it's not a step yeah. forward. Yeah. Why, can, why leave TNA to go to TNA? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, not TNA without TV. But an, yeah, an, yes. an, an even less guaranteed TNA. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, they're hunting money, and like, that's a smart thing for them because they're all, like we say, like, they don't have many years left to the yeah. gas. So they need to secure the, the best job that they can at this point. That, that's why I think that they didn't leave TNA without already knowing that there's a like open in the door for for NXT. I mean NXT already has AJ and Sullivan Joe and Austin Harris and they all vouch for Bobby Roode and Eric Young, I'm pretty sure. Especially Bobby Roode. 
Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, Rude's going to have a, honestly, a better chance at, in NXT or the main roster because he has that look and that style that maybe WWE could handle. He has an it factor. Exactly. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, that's what it says on, on the time <laughs> <time shirt. laughs> I, I, I kind of want to step to the guards earlier point like I kind of want to see that ring of honor new Japan thing because I I I no, I I think AJ I think AJ would completely be an NXT candidate if he went directly from TNA I think mm-hmm. I think it's the new Japan relationship that got him over with WWE mm-hmm. and over to WWE because obviously they're really kind of it feels like they're raiding new japan a little bit doesn't it like like, i mean they're really kind of just scraping their top guys out of there for nxt (laughs) and there's allegedly more to come possibly yeah Yeah. and 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 i don't know like i i don't feel like i don't feel like new japan i feel like there's, there's definitely enough talent in new japan i don't think they're in trouble for instance and and i think new japan is getting something out of this in the long run I don't know what that is just yet, but there's definitely a relationship just really directly there. Um, so it's not like, you know, maybe better than the ECW, you know, relationship, for instance, but it's a bigger company in general. Um, Plus, WWE now has their own, um, their own kind of feeder system for NXT, mm-hmm. which is Evolve. <laughs> right. With, with their... <laughs> With their cruiserweight uh, title tournament or you, cruiserweight tournament thing, there's they're gonna start yeah. at Evolve. So, do you think here's okay? So, so we do have they're they're gonna have. So they didn't say oh, they said some qualifying matches there, right? Yeah, just call, the qualifiers yeah. are at Evolve. Could it, couldn't it be interesting if they also announced maybe eventually? Uh, speaking to my previous point, um, New Japan will also hold some qualifiers. Well, I think because I I believe. The way they phrased it was that the American qualifiers are at Evolve. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. So, and don't they have some sort of relationship with one of the companies in Mexico? New Japan or WWE? WWE. WWE. I don't think they do. You don't think they do? They have. They have taken some talents from that area, though. As of yeah, I mean, they've been going to. Yeah, they've had tryouts with both Triple A and CMML, but. Okay. I don't think there's like an actual relationship. Okay, but they could maybe they could be for this or something. Um, I mean, they're gonna bring in guys from Mexico. Right. Definitely. Right. Certainly. Certainly. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do there, and I don't think they have an India presence necessarily, other than their touring, um, like like TNA was trying to do over there. So. Um, other than when, other than William Regal and then whatever his name. Oh uh, well. Uh, oh oh, there's that guy. There's that guy. Hi, sword. That's Kali. Yeah, that's not cruiserweight. Wow. No, he's, I'm not. Wow. I hope he, he eats cruiserweights. That, but... that remind, I hope Riz didn't watch Edge and Christian this week. They were not nice not. to, grant, to not get Great Kali. Why are you giving me Great Kali crotch? That's weird. Because, Sorg. <laughs> no, you're just showing, him a, showing us his one bad knee. <laughs> <laughs> Which is both. Yeah. Wow. All right, on that note, hey, I want to give shout-outs to our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the finest pepperoni pizza, and now also supporting the Pittsburgh Pirates at PNC Park. Hey. That's right. They're not just here in Beachview along the tracks. They're about to get ripped up in a week. They're not.